Mm -hmm. uh, what can they do? What, mm -hmm. what, what should they do um, if they feel like they might be struggling with PTSD or, mm -hmm. or CPTSD? Yeah. I mean, there, there's absolutely treatment for PTSD. And um, before we started recording, we talked about innate neurodivergence versus acquired neurodivergence. Yeah, yeah. So aut autism is an innate, like it's, you're born with that neurology. PTSD is acquired. And so it's an acquired neurodivergence that can be treated, can be supported. We can heal from it. I think for a lot of people, the combination of pharmaceutical, so medication support and therapy tends to be the ideal equation. Mm. This gets much more complicated for autistic people. For we, a we don't have of it sussed out anyway, just for for helping autistic people with like mild anxiety and like, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. yeah, partly like therapists are scared of us. If you go to a therapist and you're like, I'm autistic and I have PTSD. A lot of therapists, if they don't have like extensive training in autism, mm. they're like, Oh, I don't do autism. Like it, it feels, I mean, talk about alien. Like a lot of therapists treat it like this alien other of like, Oh, you have to go to a specialist for that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So finding support, so let, finding someone who's not scared of you and will take you on, but then also finding someone who understands your neurology. So for example, alexithymia, mm -hmm. someone who's autistic could be in therapy and, and, and suffering a great deal, but their, their mood is flat. They're maybe talking about incredibly traumatic things, but not showing a lot of emotion. So a, a therapist might misinterpret that as they're not suffering Yes. Be, because they're not displaying their emotion in the typical way. I suppose you have so, the, the, the lack mm -hmm. of using the indirect communication as well in that. That as well. And yes, exactly. And also then with trauma work, really considering the sensory profile, a lot of trauma work, not all trauma work, but a lot of trauma work involves exposure to some extent because one of the core symptoms of PTSD is avoidance. And avoidance actually perpetuates the anxiety around the trauma and it makes it grow. So, so trauma treatments, d different levels of exposure. Some it's like really intense exposure, like a lot of kind of military PTSD treatments are mm -hmm. very intense yeah. exposure. It's not all that intense, but there's some element mm -hmm. of exposure to talking about it. So considering the sensory profile of the person when you're doing exposure-based work, mm -hmm. I think that is one of the tricky things you asked me what people could do and i'm telling you like all the hard <laughs> things about yeah, getting Lisa. so let me flip to Tell something more drugs. hopeful <laughs> yeah so those are some, i mean those are just some of the barriers people experience um there is no one like therapy that works for all autistic people because we're an incredibly diverse group some of the therapies that i i often hear autistic people have positive experiences with include internal family systems or parts work and, and that can also be really powerful for trauma. So IFS is the acronym, Internal Family Systems. Mm -hmm. EMDR is before. effective. I think, yeah, it's, I, I do some IFS and I, I really like it. It's, you're talking about different parts of yourself, which makes it, it, it takes this kind of abstract idea of the fact that we have multiple parts of us mm -hmm. and turns it concrete, which I like. So I like it for autistic people for a lot of reasons, and I like it for trauma. And so I think it can go really well in the combination of autistic sure, trauma. Sure. Some people respond really well to EMDR. Other people don't. Cognitive processing therapy is kind of the gold standard for PTSD in a lot of circles. I think that's where you really want to be considering the person's sensory profile. I think some autistic people can certainly respond well to it. Some have a really strong reaction to it. But I think, I think, so yeah, there's all these different theories. I think finding a therapist that you feel really safe with, connected to is probably the most important part mm -hmm. is, is this someone who is curious about your experience, who you feel connected to, because that co-regulation that happens in therapy, as you're working through your trauma, like, I don't want to be dismissive of what kind of therapy you do, but I actually think that's probably the most important is finding a person 
that you can connect with and feel safe with. Mm-hmm. So you don't you don't feel like you have to to mask how you are. You don't feel. Mm-hmm. That, you can tell, like, my... hey, I'm getting sensory overloaded, or like I'm shutting down. I know I look regulated, but I'm shutting down. We need to like hit the brakes here. Someone mm-hmm. where you can safely communicate that. Yeah. Yeah, and then I'm not going to kind of look at you with an inquisitive like. Mm-hmm. What do you mean, like? What do you mean? You look so fine. calm. You're fine. Yeah. Just, uh, I've yeah. Had, I've had lots of lots of ones like that before, but yeah. I, I I'm just my head's going off on like all the barriers and therapy and stuff and yeah it's the I think finding someone that you can genuine genuinely connect with it's is the best because like if you if you're always closed off and you're trying to like present in a certain way then it's going to be really hard to mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. open up about things and I've actually like throughout all the years of therapy that I did when I was younger and you know some of the therapy that I've done in adulthood really it's 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 really tough it's it's hard to find anyone Mm -hmm, (laughs) mm -hmm, mm -hmm. we already have an issue with employment and pretty much all of Mm -hmm. the autism specialists that I can find in, in the UK like there's no like general health care version of it like Mm -hmm. it's just Mm -hmm. you go there for them to help you treat with your depression anxiety Mm -hmm. but not in the context of autism if i was to say Mm -hmm. alexa find me to them they would have no idea exactly at Mm -hmm. all what i mean Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. even just the basic concepts so the majority of the actual therapy that's done is me explaining to them bits about autism so it's like almost Uh, i'm educating them rather than yeah telling you know yeah absolutely. telling my experiences and having it sort of dissected and broken up uh-huh. and sort yeah. of processed and yeah 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 there's so much education that happens there, there's a really interesting article it it's a qualitative study it it talked about autistic people's experiences with therapy and i think that was one of the themes that came up i just feel like they were educating their therapists about what <laughs> autism is which I mean, on one hand, if it's a long-term therapist and like they're curious, I think, you know, I I think that makes sense that we do some of that and and that can be part of explaining our internal world. But if it's like a shorter term therapy and you're in a person's feeling like they're spending the bulk of the hour educating versus like actually diving into the work. Yeah. I mean, that's just not a great equation. It's also, uh, it's also awareness of the, the overlap of things as well, like uh, sort of the the different in the different reactions that we can have to different mm-hmm. conditions, different mm-hmm. neurodivergencies, mm-hmm. Um, acquired neurodivergencies, right, right, like, like PTSD. Mm-hmm. I mean, a bit of panic panic disorder for me. I'd probably say that acquired. Mm-hmm. I don't know. If it's it's a hard world to navigate. Yeah. Can I skip? I'm starting to feel guilty that I was so negative. Can I skip back to some practical suggestions for people who are maybe oh, listening yeah. to this and like no, just like it. feeling so deflated now? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think so. I know for for me, just learning the science of what was happening to my body with PTSD mm-hmm. was so regulating. Similar to like. Like, oh, my dopamine's low. And I think for autistic people, if we can understand what's happening to our bodies, it's really helpful. A a good therapist can do this, but you can also actually do this with like YouTube of like the anatomy of PTSD or just understanding the fight or flight response and then being able to kind of like, okay, my amygdala is going haywire right now. So I think for autistic people, learning what's happening is really helpful and and people can do that on their own. The second thing is grounding strategies. People hear a lot about relaxation strategies, which helps get get us out of our stress response. Um, I think the two like basic ingredients of a good trauma treatment starts with grounding and then relaxation strategies. But I actually prioritize grounding first. And that is, again, those practices that help us relocate ourselves in the here and the now. So it can be as simple as 
going and washing your hands with cold water and focusing your attention like this is what the water feels like on my hands or creating pressure or like there's the classic five, four, three, two, one, like list five mm. things you see yeah. going through the senses. I actually have some grounding strategies up on my website available for free, like a PDF, or you can YouTube or Google grounding strategies, but education of what the heck is happening to your body, grounding strategies, mm. and then getting some like medication support. I think for a lot of people, That's especially if they can't sleep, those would be kind of until it's, you find a, th- a unicorn therapist that knows how to work with you. <laughs> well, in terms of the medication front, I mean, I don't know much about PTSD medications. I imagine it would be similar to anxiety, would it? Or is it kind of more what's like the type of kind treatment? Of head, yeah, I mean, it depends. Like... It depends on the person, dep- depends on the provider, depends on what they're like presenting with if they're if they're more dominantly like shut down depressed versus if they're more in that activated state um, but getting like good pharmaceutical support just to help your body kind of be able to absorb some mm-hmm. of it especially mm-hmm. because like I mentioned I think our sleep gets really dysregulated for autistic people sure sure but yeah there's there's a variety of different medication options <laughs>